Hey guys, this is Jack Spot from Windows Phone 7 Central, and today I'm going to give you a quick comparison of Windows Mobile 6.5 versus Windows Phone 7, running on Windows Mobile's most powerful device, the HTC HD2, and a very powerful device for Windows Phone 7, the Samsung Focus. So let's go ahead and get started. Now before we get started, I'd like to make a quick note. Both devices are currently running at their stock state, and I realized that Windows Mobile, after several modifications are installed, can actually run a lot differently and provide a lot of the same information and feel that Windows Phone 7 provides. But for right now, we're going to stay to the stock feel and settings of the device. So we're going to go ahead and start at the lock screens, and both offer pretty much the same information with the HD2 having a slide to unlock, whereas Windows Phone 7 allows you to peek at what's currently underneath it. Other than that, though, the both devices display the current date and time and any new notifications, and that's pretty much it. Alright, so let's go ahead and unlock each device. And um, so here, here we are on the home screens of each device, the HD2 running HTC Sense. And just to give a quick comparison, the Windows Phone 7, of course, has the live tile feature where it allows a lot of information to be displayed right up front without having to dig into anything. Whereas the Windows Mobile feel, without any custom customizations installed, doesn't really give you that much information. You can jump into different programs, and of course you can access the Start menu by pressing the Start key and access your programs there, but there's not a whole lot of quick information like Twitter updates available immediately without having to dig into anything. Of course you can scroll through and get a quick glance at your text messages and your mail, stocks and that information by sliding across, but it's really not glance and go like Windows Phone 7 is. Alright, so as part of the first test we're going to run both devices on the same Wi-Fi network and we're going to do a browser test of each device. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and send each device to our home page at windowsphone7central.com. Alright, and we'll go ahead and hit go on each device at the same time. And as you can see, the Windows Phone 7 device clearly blew the other device out of the water, but we'll go ahead and also compare the browsing experience on each device. To compare the browsing experiences of each device rather than just speed, as you can see, it is much smoother on the Windows Phone 7 device than on the HG2 as far as scrolling goes and pinch zooming and overall navigating of the device. The one advantage that the HG2 does have, on the other hand, is the nice full screen browsing experience, which does not appear to be available on the Windows Phone 7 handset, and you always get this bar on the bottom and the URL up on the top. Another advantage the HG2 has is the ability to use different web browsers which give you a variety of different options and some of which even include flash support which is something that you can't that you won't be able to do on Windows Phone 7 for quite a while. Another advantage the HG2 has is the ability to select text and be able to copy and paste that text which is something that is coming to Windows Phone 7, but not quite yet. Alright, so now we're going to compare the navigation of each device, which is quite different if you think about it. And one of the big advantages the HD2 has over the Windows Phone 7 device would have to be its ability to multitask, which can cripple the device in some cases if too many programs are left running, but if used responsibly can offer you a very nice multitasking experience, which with added in task managers from third parties can make a very great multitasking experience. Whereas on the Windows Phone 7 device, if you open up one place and then head over to another place, going back will take you back to the last place you were, but there's no easy way to go forward, at least not yet. On the Windows Mobile device, you can open up programs, like so, and easily close them out with the back button and then see whatever program is running behind it and when you hit the back button there simply minimize so you can easily go back and resume whatever tasks you were doing without having to reload the application which is a nice touch if used responsibly 
Another thing the Windows Mobile device seems to beat the Windows Phone 7 device in is notifications, where you can view all your notifications simply by tapping up on the top. Whereas on the Windows Phone 7 device, you can view your notifications, but there's no way to actually jump into them without, ha without actually going into the respective application or hub. To compare the start menus of each device, the Windows Phone 7 start menu is simply a nice long list of every application you have in the device listed in alphabetical order. Whereas on the Windows Mobile start menu, you simply have all your applications in different folders that you can move around or if you have the latest build of Windows Mobile 6.5.3, you can actually drag and move exactly where you want them. And of course there are start enhancements available, but those are from third parties. Again, Windows Mobile allows you to organize different things into folders, so you don't have all your icons in one place, whereas on Windows Phone 7 you do. Now the one thing you can do is put commonly used applications and pin them right onto your start menu. However, this could get a little bit annoying if you tend to use a lot of applications on a regular basis. And unfortunately, pressing the search button in the start menu doesn't allow you to search your applications, but rather just takes you straight to Bing. Which would be nice if Microsoft gave you an option to search your applications if you're someone who tends to have a lot of applications. However, they are left in, listed in alphabetical order, which does make it fairly easy to find what you're looking for. As far as the phone experiences go on each device, the HD2 allows you to do smart dialing where you can type in part of the number corresponding with the letter on the touchpad and will be able to highlight it. Whereas on the Windows Phone 7 device, doing so does absolutely nothing. In fact, you will have to browse through your list of people in order to actually make a call, which is a little bit of an inconvenience. However, you can search through your people by using the search button. While the HG2 does seem to have a couple of thumbs up against the Windows Phone 7 device, it is important to note that the Windows Mobile device is actually a lot harder to get the hang of and also a lot of tasks do take a lot longer to accomplish on the Windows Mobile device and unless you're skilled with using it, you can encounter some strange experiences where things simply do not make sense to you thanks to the development of Windows Mobile being stretched across almost 10 years. On the Windows Phone 7 device, however, your customization is very limited in fact, really the only thing you can do is change your lock screen wallpaper and change the color tones on your device. So there you have it. Each device is very different in terms of market and use. And while the Windows Phone 7 device is much sleeker, it does lack a couple of things we would like to see, such as copy and paste, which is coming, but also customization and, of course, the biggie multitasking. Let us know which device you like better in the comment section, and be sure, if you like this video, to subscribe to us. Thanks for watching.